right guys, today I want to talk to you about Russian nesting dolls. Have you ever thought about what kind of souvenirs you bring home from a family vacation? Well, if you visit Russia, you might buy a colorful set of Russian nesting dolls. In Russia, they're called matroshka. This is another way of saying a wooden doll in Russian. Each set comes with anywhere from 5 to 30 dolls. The outermost doll is always a woman. She is a symbol for motherhood and good health. A symbol is a picture that stands for a bigger idea. The very first Russian uh, doll was created from wood by a wood carver. The doll was then painted by a folk artist. He painted a Russian woman in a yellow jumper dress and green shirt holding a black rooster under one arm. She also wore a white apron and a brown scarf over her head. Inside this mother doll were seven others, six girls and one boy, all holding items like hens and bowls. The smallest doll was a baby wearing a diaper. Since then, the dolls have become more decorative with flowers, strawberries, and birds painted on them. They even make sets showing religious figures, famous peoples, and Russian leaders. It all begins with the perfect piece of wood by a linden tree. The wood is then cut into blocks and carved using a chisel and a knife on a machine called a lathe. The top and the bottom of the doll are each carved from their own block. Then they are sanded down with sandpaper to make them smooth and sent off to be painted. All right, so now that we've just learned about Russian nesting dolls, I'm so excited for us to draw our own. So, you need a white piece of paper. You are going to start with a pencil you know me, on our videos, I always start with a Sharpie because I really want you to be able to see what I'm drawing on the video. Now, I have this little idea sheet that you can look at for ideas on how to draw your nesting doll. And you can see uh, over here, all along here, there's ideas for your head, ideas for your hair, ideas for your face, apron, decorations. Now, does that mean you have to do one of the options that's on this paper? No, but it's there to help you in case you're stuck or you want to use one of these ideas, right? So, we're going to start with our head. And I know I just said I was going to use my Sharpie, but just to start off, because I'm just so weird about wanting to start with a pencil, I would never just jump right in with a Sharpie. But like I said, I want you guys to be able to see. So. I'm just gonna start with my pencil just for my circle because I wanna make sure I make a nice circle. And then I'll do everything else with my Sharpie. Looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my head. So which one am I gonna do? Kinda like this one. Maybe a combination of this one and this one because I kinda like the bow. We'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my head. So that's another thing you can do. If you're like, oh, I kinda like the eyes on this one, but the mouth on this face or whatever. You know, you can definitely mix and match things, right? So I've started with my head and this is where like the little face is gonna be drawn in there. And now I'm gonna pick which of these I want. So to do the next step, I'm gonna draw I'm gonna start with just that line that goes over the head. Try to simplify things. Don't, um, don't get too stressed out about things being perfect. I think first I wanna go ahead and draw my bow. And like I said, feel free to change things up and make things your own and uh, make them unique, however you like. Very cute. Okay, I'm gonna make those little jumping lines. 
because I like I like this one. But like I said, I kind of combined a couple because I also wanted a bow. Oh, speaking of, I need the little side of the bow that comes around the side of the head. I can put this little idea sheet just to kind of get that general shape to start. If it helps you, you can start with that shape first, like draw this first, and then you can add all these other details on there. I probably should have done it that way, but that's okay. You can look at this to get yourself started. There we go. It's looking pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna set this back off to the side. All right, now I'm ready for my hair. I think I kind of like this one where the hair looks kind of curly. Now it's time for some eyes. And like I said, I might mix and match some eyes and some lips. And when you get your Sharpie or your black marker or your black crayon, you can color in the pupils of your eyes. Those are cute eyes. And maybe you can see her eyebrows just a little bit from behind her hair. Little nose. So just simplify things. Nothing is, is um, as hard as it looks, right? So for those lips, Right, I just started with that line, that curved line for a mouth that you guys are also used to doing. And then there's a jumping line on the above that line and then just one curved line below that line to make those little lips, right? She's looking really cute. Now, there are designs here that you can look at or you can also make your own, right? Get creative and come up with your own um, Rushing messing all designs. So I'm gonna first start by making curve line that comes up. <laughs> That's kind of cute. Okay, and I'm gonna do this little jumping line that comes all the way around just to add more detail. Okay, and then there's also some designs for down here. I like this little um, branch looking one. It looks like a little branch with leaves. But I also think I'm gonna do one or so of these in here just to add a little bit more designs around my little rooster. I'm just really filling my space up with designs. Oh, looking so cute. Okay, now this is the point where you guys would go over your pencil lines with a black marker, a black Sharpie, a black crayon. I've already done that, but I do still have a few pencil lines, so I wanna erase those. Okay, so on the smaller details, I'm gonna color those in with crayons. And then off for these bigger spaces, I'm gonna do that water te watercolor technique. But of course, you can color yours in how you'd like, or if you have, I mean, use the supplies that you have at home, right? Use oil pastels if you have them, watercolors if you have them. I know you. some of you have some really cool stuff, and if you wanna use them, I say go for it. So I'm gonna uh, set that other paper off on the side because I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna grab my crayons and start coloring in my small details.
Okay, and then to do that watercolor trick, I'm going to outline my large spaces with my markers, and then you'll see I will fill it in with my uh, paintbrush. So let me do that first. Make sure you make nice, thick lines. Otherwise, there's not enough ink to spread out. Okay, so now that I've outlined all my large spaces, then I can get my um, paintbrush and my water bowl. Or if you don't have a paintbrush, remember you can also use a um, Q-tip. So I'm going to get my brush wet and then just go towards the edges of things, the edges of those marker lines I just drew, and then pull them towards the center to fill up the rest of that space. And then you're turning your markers into little watercolors. I'm really careful that I stay inside the, just the spaces I'm trying to paint. The longer you leave that water on there, the more it kind of bleeds and fills up that space even more. Okay guys, there's my little Russian nesting doll. I think she's so cute. So I can either color the background, just like on my paper, I could color this background and make it look really, really nice and draw like a fun design that goes with my Russian nesting doll. Or I could cut her out and glue her down on a colorful background. It is up to you to finish these off and make them look so fun, but I really can't wait to see your Russian nesting dolls. They're gonna be so, so cute.